In this festive video, we're going to celebrate 3D Printmas with the Maker's Muse Christmas Tree Lattice Torture Test. Now, I put this file towards my Patreon supporters about a month ago and challenged you guys to print it, and many of you gave it a shot. So I'm going, through, going to go through your prints in this video and then put this file up for everyone else to have a crack. Let's get started. <laughs> How's it going guys? Angus here from Maker's Muse. So this is the Maker's Muse Lattice Christmas Tree. That's designed to test your 3D printers to the absolute limit. It's like a variation of the Lattice Cube and I designed it as a way to kind of really stress test your printers in a festive fashion. It was drawn in Fusion 360 and it was quite hard to model. Um, it has lots of, lots of planes at the end of lines to let me draw these lines going off into different angles and then it's uh, been patterned five times to end up with that star at the bottom towards the top. It has some really steep overhangs, actually some of them are really ridiculously steep, even more so than the original lattice uh, torture test cube. And um, I put it to you guys to test it out. Now I had originally planned to modify it, but as you might know with the move here at the Maker's Muse headquarters, um, I haven't had time. So what I'm doing is I'm going to put this file out for a public release. And I'm also going to release the source code, a source uh, model files on Patreon for you guys if you want to have a crack at modifying it. I uh, make no promises because the file itself is pretty, pretty challenging to draw in Fusion, so it's a bit messy, but it is what it is. So I'm going to go through what you guys came up with printing this torture test. Starting with Joel Telling. Now, Joel, as you may know, is the 3D printing nerd, and he had a crack at the, the file on his TiVo little monster um, and did a absolutely decent bang up job. Um, the thing about this file is the overhangs do tend to be a bit stringy and that's okay, um, especially the third one up. It goes up one, two, and then three. That third one where it, it goes across on mine, I printed mine on the Prusa Mark II and it had a bit of issues. So that's usually where it looks the worst, but it actually, if it completes, it's a pretty good sign that your printer works well. So Joel did a pretty darn good job here on the TiVo little monster on the 0.8 millimeter ruby nozzle, which is pretty neat. So that's Joel's. And then we have Brian's, who did the Christmas torture test using Kiss Slicer, Atomic Filament Extreme Jet Black. I am a big fan of that filament. Um, Dustin the Jackman showed me when I was over there in the States on the Prusa Mark IIS. So Brian's, Brian's prints here are awesome. He's done a fantastic job. And again, a little bit droopy at that third line, but really he's got his Prusa Mark II really dialed in nicely, and I love that sheen on the jet black, the uh, the extreme jet black from Atomic Filaments. These are in no particular order, by the way, guys. I just want to show you what uh, what everyone came up with. This is Chris's one that he did on the CR10 at full scale. Note, this is scaled down slightly from the original model scale. It should be about this tall. The Prusa can't quite fit it, but the CR10 certainly can. And uh, Chris actually added some lights to his, which looks really, really nice. So fantastic job there for Chris's. Uh, this is Dom's, who is another Patreon supporter. And Dom did his in Hatchbox Red PLA on the, again, the Prusa Mark IIS. A lot of Prusas representing, which is quite interesting. Fantastic job, Dom. I love that candy red. It looks really, really nice with the, the festive sort of Christmas tree lattice shape. Um, really nice finish there. This is JT's, a fellow Aussie with the Cocoon Create printer, which is the one that Aldi sold. Um, so I had to scale it down slightly like mine. But again, it completed, no problems. Um, definitely, definitely a challenging print and just goes to show how far these Chinese i3s have come in the last few years to actually reproduce something like that. It's stock, pretty much stock hardware. I think he's got a modified fan duct there, which helps with cooling massively. But yeah, that's a pretty small change to get a print like that. I found John's print pretty interesting. He printed this on the M200 from Zortrax, but he didn't use the Z Suite software. He used Simplify 3D. And uh, after doing my review on the M300, a lot of people commented in the, on the comments of that video that you can get a parser that turns G code to Z code, uh, which is pretty neat. I should have assumed something like that would exist. So he's done that and he's printed it in PETG, which is a very fair job because PETG can be hard to get a really nice accurate object due to sort of the, the higher, uh, melting point, but the quite low glass transition temperature. So quite an impressive effort on the M200 there. Next we have 3D Print Iceland who did this awesome reproduction of the lattice test and put some decorations on it, which is cool. Uh, I'm not sure what printer you used. I might have missed it. Um, 
looks like the, again, the Prusa Mark II uh, here. Trying to print the thing at 20% scale as well, just to see how it went. That is pretty impressive. A tiny, tiny lattice Christmas tree printed at 20%. Yeah, the Prusa, Prusa seems to be a pretty strong contender as the most common printer used in these tests. Next we have that 3D print guy who's Will, another fellow Australian, and he does have a 3D printing channel here on YouTube as well. And he tried the lattice test on the Flashforge Guider, which is a very large Flashforge 3D printer in PLA, I would assume. And yep, hashtag flawless victory. That is a fantastic print of the Guider. You can kind of see at the top uh, as it gets to a small area, the cooling changes a little bit, but there's no complaints there. It looks very, very good. And it's interesting because models like this several years ago would have been very difficult on almost any printer, but judging by these, a lot of you guys had no issue printing it. Next, we have another John who printed this on the Cetus. So he did two prints. The first one was a bit stringy. Uh, the Cetus is uh, produced by Cetus 3D, which is also tier time. Uh, it's a great printer, I love the Cetus. It doesn't have a heated bed, so this would be PLA, uh, or actually he has a hashtag eSunPLA+, that helps me a lot. Um, that's a decent filament, but you can see it's a bit droopy, so he changed the temperature slightly and made a massive difference. Um, yeah, that's super impressive. I actually brought the Cetus to Perth last year when we did a 3D printing meetup, and I did a, like, a lattice test there, just going at it, took it out of the box from the checked-in luggage, and it worked. Um, I... I've, as long as you're okay with like a lockdown system-ish, you can put custom G-code. I really do like the Cetus as, as a really good printer for the price point. Anyway, moving on. We have Amanda who also printed the test. I'm not sure how it worked out though. Um, that's midway, but if it's gotten past those first few ones, it would probably have been fine. It's a great color as well. Nice little aqua blue. Very cool. Uh, but it wasn't all um, all sunshine and lollipops. Some of you did have issues. I I also had issues. Fair enough. Uh, Wesley <laughs> clearly having a bit of struggle with that third third beam. Um, that is super challenging. Um, so interesting because a lot of these prints are Prusas again. Um, so it comes down to filament and settings. So you can probably do it if you just tweak those settings slightly. It'll probably improve that a little bit. And of course we've got Jatman, who's Dustin, he's got his own channel and actually does a lot of stuff on Twitch now. Uh, he runs the 3D Printing Today, uh, 3D Printing Tonight show, <laughs> talking about 3D Printing news and things like that. And yep, he's been printing with Kiss Slicer a lot recently, and this is on the Ultimaker, and that's just, mwah, just beautiful. And a lovely pink as well. So, um, absolutely nailed it there, no problem. And I have to feature Carl's as well. Um, Carl's is printing his on his Wenhao, and um, yeah, unfortunately, didn't work out. So yeah, I'm, I apologize, Carl, for my diabol diabolical tests. Um, it's uh, it's designed to be challenging, and I wish you the best of luck for getting it done. Um, judging by the other guys who have Wenhaos, a better cooling fan will probably improve the print quality. Um, and just finally, I do have to mention uh, Mark, who did a live stream of his print, but then it went um, dark towards the end. Someone turned the light off at the end of his stream. So, um, yeah, you're leaving me in suspense, Mark. I want to know how this finished, but lights went dark. So maybe you should let me know on Patreon how it turned out. Anyway, if you're interested in testing out this file, I will have it linked here on Gumroad. It is free, although donations are very much welcome, especially in this current turbulent time of uh, YouTube and Patreon. And also a huge thanks, speaking of, to my Patreon supporters. I do know the new changes are pretty terrible. Um, and I totally understand if you want to leave because of them. But I have uh, always valued your support and thank you uh, for supporting the channel. Even if you choose to leave it now because of the new fee structure, which I totally understand. But anyway, guys, let me know on the Twitters, uh, at Makers Muse, how you go with this file. And again, I'll have source files on Patreon if you want to modify it. But the STL file is free to download from the link, link above. And I look forward to seeing how you get on with it. So, till next time, guys. I look forward to seeing you again very shortly here on Makers Muse. Hope you have a fantastic Christmas and holiday period. And I'll see you again very shortly. Catch you later, guys. Bye.